Martin Scorsese's Killers of the Flower Moon is his next film after The Irishman, and at the time of the making of this video the film is in pre-production, with sets being constructed and new actors constantly being added to the cast. The movie is Scorsese's first feature-length film where he directs both Robert De Niro and Leonardo DiCaprio, with whom he has worked with separately over 10 times. It's very exciting news given how Scorsese worked with De Niro for about 20 years and then didn't work with him for around 20 years until their reunion film The Irishman, and within that 20 year gap Scorsese's main man was Leonardo DiCaprio, who was introduced to Scorsese by De Niro himself. And fans have been wondering just when exactly will we get a film where all three of these guys finally work together, and here it is. And it isn't some novelty pre-retirement picture, it's based on an incredible work by David Gran which charts the real life Reign of Terror, a period during early 20th century Oklahoma where the Native American Osage tribe saw vast numbers of their members wiped out, and the federal government sent in a team of detectives to work out who was doing the killing and why. DiCaprio and De Niro both have juicy roles as the villains, with Jesse Plemons having signed on to the picture as Tom White, the lead investigator of the murders. Since then, a lot of actors have joined the cast, and the movie pretty much has its main cast by now. The movie is mainly made up of Native American actors, like the role of Lizzie Q is being played by Tantu Cardinal. Lily Gladstone is playing Molly Burkhart, the wife of Leonardo DiCaprio's Ernest Burkhart and the niece by marriage of Robert De Niro's William Hale. A few of the gang from The Irishman have joined the film too in addition to De Niro and Plemons, with Louis Canselmi, that's Sally Bugs, playing the criminal Kelsey Morrison, meaning he's probably going to have a few verbal spouts with Jesse Plemons' Tom White, I wonder if they'll start arguing about fish again. Gary Basaraba, who played Frank Fitzsimmons, is also going to be in the film. Rodrigo Prieto is returning to do the cinematography after The Irishman, Silence and The Wolf of Wall Street. Salma Schoonmaker is of course editing. Robbie Robertson is set to do the music. And it's worth noting that Jack Fisk is the production designer. He has only about 20 credits to his name since the 1970s and it's so many of his films, like There Will Be Blood and The Revenant, look great. And he's a perfect pick for a period drama such as this. The film is set to have an astonishing budget of almost $200 million. It's an expensive, grand movie with top tier actors and it has been described by Scorsese himself as a western. Of course, a film set during the 1920s is kind of pushing it when you're describing it as a western, but having read the book, I guess it makes sense. All the usual hallmarks of a great western are there. The western landscape, the strong silent hero, bandits, cowboys, Indians, you name it. In a recent interview, the film's writer Eric Roth, who's written The Insider and Forrest Gump, said that the movie is scheduled to start filming in around two weeks, which is around the end of April at the time of the making of this video. As previously mentioned in another video, Roth and Leonardo DiCaprio argued over the script, and a major overhaul of the screenplay was done with DiCaprio playing a completely different character. He was originally supposed to play the role now being played by Plemons, and the film has shifted focus onto the villains and it's become something now of a, a moody character study rather than the initially proposed commercial murder mystery. Roth acknowledged it had been a long journey bringing the story to the screen and he added, I think this is my fifth year or sixth year on it. And there were some changes that came about that were interesting about what Leonardo was going to play in it. I think in the long run, we all had our moments of trying to figure out how best to portray things because the story is so impactful. And I think we ended up with exactly the right material and that Marty made the right decisions. I just think he's going to make, and obviously I would say this, but I think of all my work, this one could be one of the great movies. I really mean that. I think it has all the ingredients, which I don't want to jinx it, but the story is so important. As mentioned, Scorsese's film is going to cost in the region of $200 million, which is, you know, a superhero movie level budget, and even more than The Irishman's budget, which was also an insane amount for a gangster film. Roth addressed the hefty price tag by saying this movie is likely to be Scorsese's effort to make the last great big budget western, much like how The Irishman seems like it is the last big budget all-star gangster film. He said, I know Marty's trying to make a movie that's probably the last western that would be made like this, and yet, with this incredible social document underneath it, and the violence and the environment, I think it'll be like nothing we've ever seen, in a way. And so this one is, to me, one for the ages.
Roth was asked whether Killers of the Flower Moon is a full-blown western, and the answer was a bit of yes and a bit of no, with him saying it certainly feels like a western to him. He added, I mean, people will be in suits and things because it's 1921, it's during the prohibition, but the ethos, I think, is very western. And also, I think western justice, about how they said that you couldn't find 12 white men to convict a white man of killing a Native American, you'd have a better chance of having them convicted of kicking a dog. And that's kind of the feeling on that. And then also, you have these incredible people, the Osage family, that a character comes and marries into, and who's a villain and who isn't. And then into that comes a kind of heroic guy, Tom White, his name was, who Jesse Plemons is playing, who was in the Texas Rangers, and you couldn't get more Western than that. What with Leonardo DiCaprio playing a different character now, and Jesse Plemons playing the character he was originally supposed to play, Roth was asked whether Plemons is now the main character in the film. I wouldn't say he is the lead, he said. I would say that he was the designated hero, but yeah, I think that's fairer because I think the parts are pretty equal and they were always equal to a certain extent, and Leo's part is very complicated and very interesting. It's a small part for a small actor to play. I mean, if Montgomery Clift was alive, I think he might think of playing him. Roth also added that Scorsese knows this like the back of his hand, because he's been preparing for the film for so long. And given the lengthy filming schedule, which stretches through July, Roth advised audiences not to expect the film to come out before 2022. For more videos on Killers of the Flower Moon, consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the notification button down below. And thanks for watching.